Hello there, welcome to Daily FX. So we have a hung parliament here in Britain. The British Prime Minister Theresa May, she called an election to gain a larger majority and that has backfired. She now has less seats than before, but still has the most seats and has struck a deal with the Democratic Unionist Party after failing to secure a majority. Well, this is what the markets make of it all. As you can see just here, the FTSE gains and that's as the pound takes the pain, touching its lowest level since April 18th, the day Prime Minister May called that election. So we are looking at gains across the bourses throughout Europe this afternoon. Well, Nick Crawley is here with me now, our Daily FX analyst. Hello to you. Hello, Katie. What a day. We've got to start with the UK election. How, what's, what do you make of all of this, how it's um, kind of come about and hung Parliament? We did have a YouGov uh, poll, didn't we, saying that this yeah. would happen, and it's, it's rather true. Yeah, in fact, one of the pollsters was very accurate, weren't yeah. they? They were very accurate, only people calling it a hung Parliament. Yeah, uh, it's, it's out of all the... the uh, the reactions or the results that you could have got, this is probably the most unexpected. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, nobody ever thought Labour was really had a chance to get a majority. So this hung Parliament, and, and it's caused a lot of uncertainty, and I think that's the word that you're going to hear a lot, uncertainty. Uh, We're across, used to that word now. Across the sort of range of uh, yeah, asset markets or political backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, Let's look at Sterling then. Yeah, we can look at Sterling. I mean, we can see uh, Sterling... Took a, it took a pounding earlier on, and it, and, it, and it sort of came down, and it sort of touched its 100-day moving average. It's bounced back up since then, um, and it's sort of went back to uh, and took back all the sort of uh, gains that it made on the April the 18th rally. Um, it's still looking weak. Um, there's really there's a there's a cap around the 130, 130 spot 50 level. Uh, at the moment, there seems to be no reason to actually sort of go back up to those kind of levels. Um, and I think sterling will remain under pressure. OK. Um, I want to talk about just probably stay with sterling then for a moment because next week is a huge week for the UK economy because on Thursday, we call it Super Thursday, don't we? Mm -hmm. And it's when we've got the Bank of England's interest rate decision, the quantitative easing programme and also the, the meeting minutes as well that we like to dig into. Mm -hmm. um, in light of what's happened, what are we expecting from Mr Mark Carney this week? Um, yeah, well, normally normally we get a quarterly inflation report thrown in there as well, but we, all monetary policy levers will be left unchanged. I mean, there's no reason for Mark Carney to, uh, to change anything the economy uh, is still fairly weak uh, and as I said he's, he's not going to change anything um, obviously again it's like the ECB meetings like the FOMC meetings you're, you're looking to see what they actually say what you know what's the rhetoric behind it what you know what's their reasoning for sort of keeping things unchanged but um, the UK UK growth is weak you know we got uh, 0.2 was the last uh, uh, Q1 estimate uh, inflation still is around the 2.7 2 2.8% Real wage growth is being crimped, um, so there's there's no reason to do. You know, Mark Carney won't do anything. And as I said, it's just listen. Let's listen to what he has to say, mm -hmm. what his views are on this sort of political upheaval we've had. Yeah. And before we move on and talk about the US, can you just touch upon the FTSE 100 and tell us what's happening here? Because I did mention earlier we're actually looking at gains this afternoon, and one would imagine yeah. this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. I mean, this is this correlation that we get between the, 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 the FTSE 100 and the uh, and the foreign exchange rate and sterling. Um, Weak sterling, the FTSE goes up, and vice versa. Um, again, it's not really a huge move. Uh, I mean, the, the currency was down about two percent at one stage, and I think the FTSE was up about one percent. Um, again, the recent uh, all-time high around seven thousand six hundred uh, doesn't look under threat. Um, and, 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 and while the UK companies, the exporters, are being boosted by a weaker sterling rate, really the underlying UK economy is still weak, and that's got, really got to start being factored in. Just have a quick look at the 250 as well. Yeah, I mean, this this is a chart that will probably tell you a bit more about where the you know what people think about the UK economy. Again, it made a record high recently. Uh, we've come down about best part of what, four or five hundred uh, points since then. Um, this basically shows you what people think of the UK economy uh, and this political upheaval, as we said before. Um, again, it looks vulnerable on the downside. Mm -hmm. I want to move on because next week, midweek, it's all about the FOMC yeah. meeting minute, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We are expecting a move on this one. Uh, we are. And if we didn't get a move, now that would be the big shock. Yeah, and expected a uh, quarter point uh, interest rate hike. Mm -hmm. um, again, uh, it's you know what's it, what uh, Fed Chair Janet Yellen says afterwards. Um, 
So you, everything's priced in. Uh, the dollar's had a, a little bit of a bounce of recently. Maybe actually today it's getting a bit of a bounce. It's a, a safe haven currency for choice. Let's have a look. Um, but what you have in the, in the, in the US is you have um, you know, 4.3% unemployment rate. I mean, that's very good. Um, job growth, last uh, recent job growth was fairly weak. Um, and inflation at the moment is, is fairly weak, but it looks to pick up. So, yeah, we've got the uh, rate hike, and it's the, it's the expectations of what they're going to say about giving us a hint to the next rate hike. Is there going to be one in September, maybe one in December? You know, who knows? Because we had that poor jobs number, didn't we, last Friday, the non-farm payroll number was far less than what we were expecting. Yeah, we had, well, it was a poor number, but as I said, you know, you've got this 4.3% unemployment rate. So basically, you know, it's going to be difficult to get new people, you know, new jobs for new people. The, you know, the, the pool of people available is becoming less and less, mm -hmm. um, which is a good sign. As I said, it's a good sign for the economy and, as I said, should undermine uh, or underpin uh, a, a potential another rate hike September or December. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to next week, just to sum it all up, obviously the um, election result here in the UK will still be spoken about. Um, I think sterling will still be volatile. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Super Thursday to look forward to. We've got the FOMC meeting minutes, as we said. Mm -hmm. We've got James Comey, that testimony. Yes. It's still rumbling on. We still don't have a concrete uh, conclusion to that. Mm -hmm. What else is on your mind for next week? Anything else? I think the other one to look at is uh, on Tuesday we got the, uh, the UK inflation figures. Okay. Uh, and we're you know, looking at 2.7, uh, 2.8%. Um, this is cause, this is going to cause Mark Carney a bit of a bit of a problem. You know, wages are weak, real uh, wages are contracting because you know inflation's out uh, outrunning wage growth and. Um, so he's, Mark Khan is going to have this problem now when he sort of comes on Thursday, when he chats on Thursday. He's going to have the worries about Brexit, the political situation. Mm -hmm. He's going to have potentially uh, continued low growth and high inflation. And so, you know, he's, he's really going to have to start juggling a few things to keep that lot up. A toxic combination. <laughs> it could well be. All right, thank you very much indeed. That's our Nick Thanks. Cawley there summing it all up for us. Let's have one last look at the numbers. And as I said before, because the pound is suffering today in the uh, wake of the UK election result, which means we're going to have a hung parliament, we've got the FTSE gaining. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you once again on Monday. Thank you.